your sleeping quarters should be in the, the southern side of things. This automatically provides you with 50% more market share rather than having 50% less. What we're trying to create is a natural cross ventilation flow from one window out the other side. After spending 10 years in the architecture industry as an architect and five years studying to become an architect, I've designed more floor plans than I can count. I've seen the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. And more often than not, floor plans can be improved, regardless of how bad they may appear on face value. All it takes is a little bit of architectural knowledge and a little bit of skill. So that's the goal today. Today, I wanna to teach you exactly what you can do in five easy steps of how you can improve your floor plan right now right here. So let's take any old floor plan off the internet and pick just a random project builder. I won't name names just not to embarrass anybody. But basically, this is your run-of-the-mill project home in Western Australia. And most floor plans are relatively the same if you don't go into an architect. So let's talk about it. First of all, your main living areas need to be positioned appropriately. The first thing you need to consider is solar passive design. And you need to consider your specific location. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, just reverse everything I say for this section. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you want your living areas to be north facing. As the sun rises and sets, it's predominantly facing on the north side of your property. So therefore, you want that sun to be heating up those living spaces and trying to get some passive heating happening in the main areas. If your backyard can be directly adjacent in the north, of your living room, that's an immediate win and immediate bonus as well. Once again, in the Southern Hemisphere, your primary or your master bedroom needs to be in the perfect spot. Most of the time, people opt for the perfect view out of their master bedroom. Instead, they should be opting for the perfect solar orientation. Southern Hemisphere means your sleeping quarters should be in the, the Southern side of things. So living on North and sleeping on the South. This provides a natural solar passive design to your home, allowing the southern end to be slightly cooler than the living end, which means your body can naturally sleep deeper and sleep better when it's sleeping in the southern side. If you're in the northern hemisphere, just flip it. Bedrooms need to be in the north. Living needs to be in the south. Relatively straightforward. In primary and master bedrooms, of course, there is a lot more to discuss, like door opening sizes, widths, which we'll get to a little bit later down the track. But for now, if you are running your own architectural projects and potentially want to be able to organize your systems properly, check down the description down below. I have an architectural filing system available for all of you right now at davidtomich.com.au. Moving on to bathroom layouts. Now, bathroom layouts are an overly complicated beast and they really shouldn't have to be. Generally, bathroom layouts are all about personal choice. But if you're looking to develop or if you're looking to sell this property in the future, there are a couple of things you need to take note of. First of all, one of the biggest conversation pieces is a toilet door or no toilet door. Believe it or not, it is one of the most common arguments people have when we talk about floor plans. So if you're looking to develop or sell, make sure you include a toilet door. By including the toilet door or a separate toilet to the actual hand basin and shower, this automatically provides you with 50% more market share rather than having 50% less. People who don't want a door are happy to live with a door, but people who need a door are not happy to live without a door. Next, of course, is glass shower screens. Now, glass shower screens can be absolutely beautiful, but they require a lot of maintenance. So if you're looking to be able to design something that is a little bit more of a low maintenance product, completely scrap the bathroom shower screen and opt for a full height tiled wall instead. Now let's move back to widths and opening sizes. Like I mentioned before, this is relatively critical and a lot of people make the same mistakes time and time again. First of all, there are a number of standard architectural door sizes in Australia and all of these are in millimeters. They generally convert pretty closely around the world so just find the closest one in your location. To move through this relatively simply, toilet doors should be no smaller than 720 millimeters door leaf size. Bedroom doors should be no smaller than 820 millimeters. Ideally, you push this even further if you can. So toilet doors should be 820 and bedroom doors should be 920. This is done so for a number of reasons. First of all, if you can increase your toilet door sizes, then you're getting a much wider toilet, which can eventually be converted to have some grab rails 
if you need it in the future. Whereas by having 920 doors in the bedroom, it not only adds a touch of luxury, but also allows you to move your furniture in and out so much easier without damaging any of the door frames or the door itself. 920 doors throughout are super ideal if you need some accessibility requirements as well. You might be thinking right now, well, I'm perfectly happy. I've got no accessibility or movement issues. Well, like some of you may remember, a couple years ago, I ruptured my Achilles and was on crutches for three months. Small doors, small toilets makes life hell, even when you're temporarily on crutches. So just imagine what may happen in the future. You always want to be prepared and to be able to continue living in your own house. So wherever you can, toilet doors upgrade to 820, bedroom doors to 920, and if you can do all of them at 920, that's perfect. With widths, it's super simple to remember. If you can remember one meter, you can remember what your passages need to be. Anything smaller is gonna make very challenging times for you ahead in the future. If you can make your hallway widths even 1.1 or 1.2, that would be incredibly unique and moving in the right direction for accessibility and movement in the future as well. But nonetheless, you don't want your hallways to be any less than one meter. And ideally, you're measuring from baseboard to baseboard or skirting to skirting if you're here in Australia. Skirting to skirting, it may be 35 mil, it may be 50 mil, depending on what kind of profile you're looking at. So you always wanna give wall to wall and skirting to skirting the perfect measurement, one meter at the floor level. Last but not least is cross ventilation. Now, as our energy bills get higher every single month and the cost of living goes through the roof, we really wanna be able to cool our house naturally. And here in Australia, we've just gone through a heat wave in Western Australia with 43, 44, 45 degree days continuously for the last two, three weeks. So it's been incredibly hot and something air conditioning units aren't able to handle. The power grid is struggling. So we wanna be able to cool better and smarter. We'll start with bedrooms. Wherever possible, try and have two windows ideally located on opposite walls. If you can't have them on opposite walls, one in front, one to the side is perfectly fine. What we're trying to create is a natural cross ventilation flow from one window out the other side so that the air is naturally cooling down the space. High and low windows work perfectly as well and roof lights that ventilate paired with a window also work super well. So there's all sorts of options if you're boxed in. Same deal applies in the living rooms and most of the general living spaces. Wherever you can, try and position two windows diagonally opposite from each other so that the air can flow through your house, exit out the window and naturally cool it. This is something so many people miss or so many people forget about and they just place fixed windows everywhere for a beautiful view, but they never get any natural ventilation and natural airflow into their own home. Anyway, that's all from me team. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you smash that subscribe button down below to help us reach our 100 subscriber goal. It is a massive goal. We're almost at the 50K mark, so we're almost halfway there. I truly appreciate every single one of you that smashed it so far, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.